Here he is, getting ready for pancake day. With Where is porridge as flat as a pancake? Yes, I think that quite appropriate. Although today is not pancake day, today is before pancake day. Um, I'm making the most of actually being able to reach up and make things because that's not going to happen for a while. Um, and uh, also been keeping an eye on the weather because um, we've had Storm Freya come over. Although I think it should be fine. Um, certainly the wind speed is a lot less than it was. Um, but Freya's a pretty cool name, so yeah, another cool thing to happen. Goddess of protection. Sorry? Goddess of protection. Yes, protection and rebirth and cycle of life and all that stuff. So I've had a good Kind made. of appropriate. Yeah, it is kind of appropriate. Rebirth. On pancake day. <laughs> I never can be worse than this. So I prefer to sleep. I didn't realise I'd be confronted by the camera again. <laughs> well, I just I just wanted to let all your viewers know that the <laughs> the that because you're going to get looked after solidly for the next few weeks, mm -hmm. I thought you'd make breakfast in bed for me today. I want to get some cuddles in, just some nice cuddles. So I won't be seeing you for a couple of weeks, will I? No. And you'll be like, where's daddy? Where's daddy? Why is he not here to stroke me and feed me and things and show me attention? Hello, just a quick check-in. So we're just putting everything in the car. We're pretty much there. We need to just drop off a ladder and then head round to my mum's on the way. My hair is all over the place because it's still quite windy, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was before. Um, so, you know, it, it's all right. It's kind of cloudy at the minute, but... You know, nothing nothing out of the ordinary like it was last night. In a way, I'm very pleased because if I'd had my surgery, for example, today, then um, it would have been very, very problematic getting up on the Sunday. My face is really red. Why is that? Why is my face really red? I've done, like, two things. <laughs> Hello, we are on the road, sort of. We're just dropping off a ladder. It's kind of weird because I'm getting nervous, even though today is not the actual day. My face is really, really red. And uh, we're gonna head up to my mum's first and get her, and then we're gonna drive up to Hull. So yeah. Say again. Watch out, Kitch. Glamorous driver. Doing amazing driving in a heavily overladen car, being blown around by the wind. Your, 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 your travel day here is somewhat blustery. Storm Freya has just passed over and she said, screw you, you're going to have to concentrate three times as hard on this long journey. Gee, thanks. Motorway number two. M45, so yeah, one more on a quiet road. I thought I'd take the liberty of actually announcing at least the majority of the winners for the uh, bind competition I did in January. So, well done, or well, congrats, to Ethan, who's got the Morph Binder, and Matthew, who's got one of the Tri-Top Binders. Um, I have contacted the other person as well, who's won the second Tri-Top Binder, um, because they need to confirm their address with me. However, they haven't done that yet, so I'll give it a little bit of a while, and oops, the mic is bouncing on the windscreen, sorry. Um, I'll give it a little bit of time, but please, person, do respond to my email. You've, you've got an email in your inbox, check your spam, maybe, or else so I might have to give it to somebody else. But yeah, once I've got back home after getting my trains, and that's when I'll sort out the binders. So, um, so each of you who's won, I will send you like a, you know, like a postal receipt. So you've got that. So again, well done and congrats, and I hope you enjoy them all. And I got so many entries this time. I got 18, and all from different corners of the earth. Um, I did it completely randomly, but all the winners happen to be based in the US, which is like shipping, but never mind, it's all for them. We should totally cheat on these competitions so that low postage prices are no. a thing for us. No, wrong, not doing that. So I'll be shipping those fairly shortly and I'll let you know when that's all gone through. We have a new passenger. Please welcome Mum 2 to the stream. No, it's Mum 1. Well, that's all relatives.
hotel room number one. With a view out there, we can just about see the Humber Bridge and the estuary. And in there, Jason is making various noises. I just discovered why it smelt so bad in the car. Okay, so we've made it, made to the hotel. The drive was fairly smooth, except for what Becky just mentioned, apparently. Um, we're in uh, room 11, which um, I don't really believe in lucky numbers, but that's like my favorite number, so that's pretty damn cool. And we've got a lovely view out to the river and everything, and we could even jump out of the window if we wanted to, because it's the ground floor. Um, yeah, so I think it's quite early still, it's about ten past four, so I think we're going to entertain ourselves for a bit and then get some dinner. So how are you feeling? Uh, well, it's nine o'clock, just about. Um, like, three different emotions have been going through my mind, like, every twenty minutes or something, just on cycle, so... Like, it's like excitement, and then it's nervousness, just something general, and then it's impatience, and at the minute I'm feeling impatient, because it's like, yeah, we've got a little bit more time, then we have to sleep, and then we sort of slowly get up. I've never seen you look as nervous as you have tonight. Really? Never. Well, there you go. Like, um... Have you been thinking about, like, if things go wrong? No. It's, again, it's not, like, anything specific. It's just... I was saying to Mum earlier, it's, it's this whole thing my brain hasn't really taken in that it is happening for real yet because I've just waited so long that I've become used to imagining that it will happen at some point. But it's literally happening tomorrow in less than 24 hours. Yeah, that's the Humber Bridge. This is this is not our bed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's weird, like, I just can't properly take it in, I don't think. And I don't think I will until I actually wake up. <laughs> I don't know why, but... Again, it's, I think, just because I've become so used to it. So long, and I've become used to having these, and... Yeah, I, I know this is right, but suddenly it's like, oh, they're not going to be there at some point. And uh, hopefully that will be in less than 24 hours' time. Yes, a lot less than 24 hours now. Yeah. It's like 16, 17 or something. Mm. Yeah. But we had a nice dinner. My tip for those of you about to go through this is bring board games. Yes, <laughs> they're helping. And I kind of fancy playing some Star Realms. Yeah, so we're going to do that now. Yes, although we, we, we have no coffee. No, we don't. Although it is quite late. It is. It is without coffee. It is. We do have decaf. Yeah, they, they gave us like one regular and like sachet and then two, three decafs. It's like, what? Who the hell drinks decaf? And they're like one person who drinks decaf. What? I know one person that, for medical reasons, couldn't drink coffee for a period of time and had decaf during that period to cope and it didn't help and he ceased to function mm. and now he drinks coffee again. Just like... <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do in the morning. I am more nervous of tomorrow mm. than you are. Really? Because I'm not going to get coffee. Oh, oh, because of the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, though, this is reminding me of the first bit of, of Finn's video, because I've been watching so many surgery videos this week, I'm a little bit obsessed, and he's, like, he's there with his partner, and uh, it's just like, oh, yeah, I'm excited. And I am excited, I really am, but I think, I think at the moment I'm more sort of like, oh, come on, let's get on with it, and before I was definitely sort of nervous and... Mm. withdrawing and, and stuff but then we were in the restaurant so I didn't want to just start talking about it loads yeah so like I guess it just boils down to I've never had an op before so it's just general nervousness of oh this is something I've not done therefore unknown and ooh. yeah 
Couldn't have a small one first to get some practice, could you? No. Going for a big one. Well, I've had, I've had general anaesthetic. I had mm. eight, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a tooth here that just ah. stopped coming through. It got wedged in my gum, so I had to have like literally like eight injections in my mouth, mm. and it still hurt like hell when they tr- tried to get it out. But apart from that, so no. you were conscious. Yeah, well, yeah, it was local. So that's not general. No, 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 no. I said local. Ah, oh, sorry. I thought you said general. Oh, no, no, sorry, no. No, I mean, no, I've never had general, but I've had local. Mm-hmm. I swear I did nothing. Who <laughs> um, oh, did? Um, so, so yeah, very, very mixed emotions, but it's normal, I suppose, apparently. Is the backstage person ready? Speed! <laughs> Morning everyone, it's about, I think, like nearly 8 o'clock or 5 to 8 or something like that. Um, yeah, sleeping was, was interesting. Um, like, I slept really well up until about 4am and went to loo and then I was just like, uh, oh my god, so excited, because uh, it's, it's, it's nearly here and stuff. And also, when we were cuddling last night, I had a bit of a sort of a, a cry of how happy I am for this, which I've kind of been waiting for, because it's like, I don't want to be nervous, I want to be happy and stuff, because that's what it's for anyway. So I've decided, whilst having my morning coffee, to write myself a letter, but there's no pen in the friggin' hotel room, because I think the last person who was here took it, and there's like one piece of paper, it's really weird. So I'm going to write it on my phone instead. Dear Jason, Your top surgery day has finally arrived. Your dysphoria hit you square in the chest, lol, when you were 23, and you knew you shouldn't have a chest that looks like that. And before then, ever since they started growing, your mind has literally disassociated itself with any thought of having them at all. When you were a kid, you used to wear a toga, or rather, a towel, in the shape of a toga after being in the bath, for example. You used to beat your chest like Johnny Weissmuller as well. Look, you know you need this and that you will look right once it's done. It may take a bit of time to get used to because you're so familiar now with having breasts, but I believe in you. Love you, Jason. Hello, we've just had breakfast and stuff. I am feeling very calm, um, very full, but I can't eat now for six hours. Um, also, I don't know if you can see, but I've got loads of gunky stuff in my nose because, uh, thank you babe, I wasn't expecting a massive close-up of my, my nose. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of doing my head in, but you have to sort of put this, like, stuff in that kills bacteria, like, three times a day for five days, but not much longer now. Um, but uh, yeah, apart from that, I've been getting some absolutely lovely messages from people saying, like, good luck and stuff so thank you very much for those and you're amazing all of you who sent me messages I've kind of kept it fairly low-key although I won't do once I'm once I'm out I will very much be shouting about it from the rooftops because seriously so yeah I think we're gonna check out now um, and then we've got a bit of time before we have to actually get to the hospital it's now quarter past nine um, and we've got to be there at ten so we might have like another drink in the bar which for me will be definitely water uh, then again, it is very early, so if the others are drinking alcohol, I'll be a bit worried too. Uh, especially because Becky's driving it, she's not. Uh, but yeah, next shot, I guess we'll be in the hospital. I'm in the hospital and I'm in a gown. I've still got these on because they need to like make sure I'm not pregnant. What, what are you zooming in on? <laughs> a shoe. Um, I've been drawn on quite meticulously and he's taught me through like how it works so from a cosmetic point of view and a bit more detail so that was good. Do you want to give him a little tour like around the room? Okay. Some heavy duty stuff there. Yes, yeah, so we've got a vacuum pump just in case you OD. Uh, we've got some oxygen, just in case you're on an airplane. Um, we've got the emergency call button, the saline drip hanger, and over here is a mind ray. So obviously it's an alien device, because it's a mind ray. 
Um, and there's a bathroom over there. There is. There's also a clock on the wall, so you can slowly watch the seconds tick by. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. And yes, an, an ensuite, which is the worst camera pan ever. I'm sorry. I haven't looked in here. It is. Ooh. Very plush. Oh, and oh, there's me. Hi. It is posh. I actually have not seen this yet, so. Well, <laughs> the nurse did say it's a nice hotel. Wow. That is not bad. Oh. Yes, you, your drawing is just visible under your gown yeah. there. Well, I was thinking of selling it at the Tate Gallery. Should get a few thousand for it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Let's not smush my mother any further with it. You, you did kind of hit her into her hotel room earlier, didn't you? With the door. It's <laughs> So yeah, there's a couple more bits I need to do, and then that's it. So we've the, the clock. We've we've got um, until three, but we have ball games and stuff to entertain ourselves with. And the anaesthetist came round and was very very casual, and just asked if I was all right. I'm like, yeah. He was very nonplussed, wasn't he? He was extremely nonplussed. The most chill person ever. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably because he's doing the anaesthetic. He doesn't yeah. want to be a stressy guy, does he? I don't know if that's coming out on video, but <laughs> my GP has said, "Yeah, it's bang on, yeah. bang on in the middle." Sounds pretty good to me. Are you recording my vitals? Mm -hmm. Yes, according to that, apparently you're a gerbil. I'm a gerbil. Yes. Why do you say I'm a gerbil? Uh, it's clear on the readout from the alien mind ray device. Oh, I see. Hello. Hello, it is me again. Um, I'm alone in the room for a bit because uh, they've popped off for like 10 minutes or something. Uh, so we've had the anaesthetist come and the nurse just to sort of go through some paperwork. And uh, I've got my gown on still. I'm going to put on my uh, stockings and... Uh, Lovely cotton pants in a, in a few minutes probably, just to sort of get used to them and things. And now I'm just drinking loads of water up until midday, so at the minute it's... Uh, it's... sort of nearly ten past eleven-ish. So I've got a bit of time still just to drink loads more water, but um, I'm fine with doing that anyway. And um, yeah, I've got everything ready. Um, not really that much to say now. Um, I, I'm assuming they're just trying to work out if I'm definitely not pregnant, which I know I'm definitely not pregnant. Um, <laughs> that is a fact. Check out these sexy bastards. Sexy. Ooh. <laughs> Aquamarine. Don't even one line down yet. And the sexy underwear that you have to wear for how long? Two weeks. And they've only given you how many pairs? One. <laughs> Sexy. It like just turned off, but then you get the imperative stand by. Even though it's the same kind of it. It's the same thing, but it's also not. <laughs> Do you well, not get what I mean? It's not off. No, but why can't they put standing by? That way at least it would make grammatical sense. Why is it called standby? Because it's not saying what the machine's doing, it's telling us what to do. We need to stand by. Yes, but then it should be two words. No, you're right, it is saying what it's doing. Stand yeah. by. It's on standby. It is standing by. Well, it doesn't look like it's sitting down, let's be honest. I mean, it kind of towers over the bed. It's the long wait. Yes. I've just been told that he might be getting in a little early. Mm hmm Well, it's quite possible it's not, you know, a slight chance. Mm. So, um, it could be any time now, really. For next, well, no more than 90 minutes maximum, but because that's your original time, isn't it, three? Yeah. But it's probably going to be like half hour or something. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm 
starting to get a bit hungry and caffeine deprived so I hope it's not too long because <laughs> but hey these are gonna be gone soon yay bye bye I can't wave bye to them that sort of works right yeah or, or we could do that to them. Yes. So I'm in hotel number two. I've just checked in. And Jason is in surgery right now. Uh, went in at three o'clock. Was it half three? I think it was half three. Um... And it's like this hotel is just like it's ten minutes away. So thought I'd do the check-in and and then head back. And now is the horrible bit because I'm waiting. <laughs> horrible bit for me. For him, he'll be unconscious right now under general anaesthetic, and then he's just going to wake up and it'll all be fine. Well, I imagine he'll be in pain and painkillers and stuff. Oh god, I'm rambling, you know. Uh, when I switched the camera on, I thought, oh, I'll talk about you know, what it's like to be a partner going through this. Because like, there are lots of trans channels on YouTube. There aren't many trans partner channels. <laughs> but right now, I just, I kind of just want to get back to the hospital and wait there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the the last few weeks have been very hard, the last week in particular, and I don't think anything really prepares you for that, like, and it's just incredibly intense, like, there are days, the moment I wake up, I have to be supportive, and, you know, he needs needed emotional support. I know how much he needs this operation. But what do you say? How, how do you give that support? Because you can say, yeah, look, it, it's just eight days away, seven days away, six days away. But in reality, every day is, is as hard as the first. There's no day that gets easier for somebody going through this. It's just it's another hard day and another hard day and if anything the last few weeks have been the hardest of all because it's so close that he can't quite touch it can't quite believe it and it's been difficult and, um, emotionally tough at times And I guess, I guess for us, the thing that's kind of kept us sane was, you know, playing board games or something that would distract us, um, keep us busy, you know. Jason's mum now has, has gone swimming because she, she needs to focus on something. And I, I totally get it because like, I'm bouncing off the walls, but I need to bounce off the walls. It's my job in all of this. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm gonna finish recording this and I'm gonna get back over to the hospital and I'm gonna wait there and I'm gonna watch rubbishy YouTube videos on random things, whatever comes up, doesn't matter. <laughs> Remember to take my phone charger with me, <laughs> very important. I think that phone's gonna be flat, I'm rambling. I'm gonna switch it off now. Hopefully, the next bit of footage you see will be Jason high on morphine. So.
riveting high action mm. sequence here. Well, I thought I'd be a bit more exciting, but no. <laughs> I just feel really tired. You've had quite a lot of things bumped into your bloodstream. Yeah. So... Many hours. Well, no, I'm just working out how long I've been down. But three hours, just over three hours, yeah. ten minutes. Mm. It was a half three, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. But I bumped into Mr. Nisha in the corridor while okay. I was going to get some coffee. That's good. He, you'd, he'd just finished and said everything was fine. Oh, so. Looked delighted with himself, so I'm sure that'd be great. Okay. Just pull this down a little. Okay, but don't just don't move yeah. too much, okay? There you go. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I think yeah. you'll you'll feel even more like that tomorrow when Mr. Neeshaw comes and reveals all of his handiwork. Yeah, well it's not like the Ten days while they take your nipple sort of dressing them as well, but even so. Yeah. It's just your dad, just let me know you're back at He says probably full of morphine, send my love if he wakes. Glad he has you with him. Aww. giving you this, we're giving you this, we're giving you this. And I'm like, oh, okay. Darling, they're, they're yeah. absolute experts in what they're doing. Their knowledge is amazing. So he's out and he's... <sighs> I haven't stopped worrying. So I'm back at the hotel, I've had dinner, Jason's sleeping it off, and I can't stop worrying. Didn't expect that. I thought I'd see him come out and like, uh, everything would be okay, and, and it is. But I'm still worrying, like seeing him so fragile after the operation and, you know, in pain. Which, of course, is in pain. It's been cut open. <laughs> but... I just... feel... 
worried, like he's not okay yet. I feel like he's still in the woods even though I, I know it's fine.